Okay, now the next fine motor skill that we're going to attempt to help you do a lot better, and that's art. Now, sometimes people get a little bit afraid of art. I never was good at art. I can't color inside the lines. And what I want to do is show you that you should not restrict yourself because of your fine motor skills or because of, you, of how you feel about yourself because art, there is no wrong answer in art. Art is a journey. And art is a very important part of our, our self-expression and our self-esteem. So you shouldn't veer away from anything that's artistic, whether it's in poetry or literature or actual physical doing artwork. So we're gonna show you some things that you can do and we'll also adapt some of the things that we've already shown you on how to redo equipment. You wanna make sure that you have your grip sheet here so things don't slide away from you. So I've got it all lined out here so that our inks and stuff aren't gonna roll away from us or our glue stick. And the first thing that we're gonna do is look at some art. So we're gonna take just a minute here and I'm gonna show you a little bit of artwork so you get over the fear of art not coming out and looking right. Because there is no right answer to art. It's your own self-expression and how you apply colors. So here are some pictures from the French Impressionistic. And here's another one on this side. And let's take a look at a few more. Again, look at these faces. They're there, but they're, they're not real clear. There's not tight lines about how they look. But you see the shape and the color, which creates a vision in your eye and let your eye fill in the blanks for you. Let's try a few more. None of these lines on here are perfectly straight, so we don't have to worry about drawing a straight line, do we? Oh, here's a great one. Look at that boat. Good picture. We can see people in it, but we can't see a lot of detail on the people. But we get the image of what it actually is because your mind and your eye is coordinated to fill in those details for you. So don't be afraid of art, and let me start to show you how you can enjoy some artwork. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a picture. You don't have to be an artist and know how to draw stuff. I happen to pick out this particular picture off of a large calendar. Hold it up here straight. So this is the picture that I'm gonna reproduce. I might add some things into it, who knows? It's because it's a creative adventure. Sometimes you start out with an idea and your creative juices start flowing and you add something or color changes or an object changes or a shape changes and all of a sudden your mind is going and carrying you off to different places. And it could be better than what you thought you originally wanted to draw. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take my picture on my workspace and I'm gonna tape it down. Again, especially when we only have one hand that's working well for us. We want to make sure that, that things are secured and in place. And let's get all four corners so it doesn't roll away from us. So our picture is now secured. And the next thing we're gonna do is take a clear sheet of plastic. It's just, just a piece of plastic. And what I'm gonna do is now tape that on top of my picture where I want it to be. And I don't want this in my picture, but I'm gonna pull it up this high, so I'll have that in my picture. So now we're gonna tape that down into place. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our, our paint brushes. And as you can see, I have a variety of sizes and shapes. For some people, they're gonna need a thicker one. And again, 
This would be a thing where I would take the, the foam noodle and I might put the foam noodle on top of it to make it thicker. So somebody who can go like this or only like this can now hold it. The next thing, all my paints that I have are non-toxic and um, they are also oil-based. The reason I want it to be oil-based is because they won't dry as quick and I can move the colors around and change the shape or I can even start to scrape into the paint to get a different texture. But before I open up these paints, most important thing that I want you guys to know is you don't want to end up ruining your clothes doing this. So I've taken this old dress, I cut the back out of it, I put it on top of me, stick my hands through here, so I'm covered. No sense creating that million dollar piece of artwork if you're going to end up ruining your clothes, right? So now we'll get our paints out. Now with this, sometimes you might need a little bit of help. I know that I have enough arthritis in my hands that sometimes I can't get the lids to come off. So when you use a pair of pliers. Get some color in there. That's a little bit of purple and that'll work well and again, I want to keep all this stuff on my net, my mat here so that it doesn't roll away and get away from me and go off on that floor. Let's see what else do we have on here. Orange. There we go. Again, I'm going to need this. Get that going for me. Much easier that is. Okay, I believe we got some white here. Okay, so we have a, enough of our colors, and the next thing that we're going to do is pick out a paintbrush here, and we're going to start to paint this picture. So let's mix some colors together. And by mixing my orange and my purple, I can make a brown. And that's what I need for my fence in here. So we'll get this on here, a couple fence posts, a couple big ones in the front here. And look at this, I'm not worried about my line, and actually I'm blending a little bit of orange and a little bit of purple to make shadows on the outside, make it look stronger as it goes back farther. Get my fence post in here. For some of these details back in here, I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush. And let's go to this brush here. And I've got some trees back here in the mist. So let's add a little bit of blue into this. And paint the trees in the background here. Don't be afraid. Maybe I'll have one tree farther back and I'll make that one a little bit darker. I 
mix a couple of my little colors together here. Get some light browns for my grasses up here. Oh, I see I made a mistake. I'll go back and add some more of the dark brown because I've got to do one of the rails down here. So let's get to that rail back in there. Okay. I'm going to take that out to the edge. Add more fence in the back. I'm doing this with a little bit lighter brown than what we added in the front. Looks for a nice little pattern. Get a little bit of a brown in there. I'll blend these colors in here. Now we've got a nice lake in here, and I'm a little bit undecided whether to try to get that lake in there or not, simply because it might make it too messy. But it doesn't really matter, because with this printing, when I do a couple of prints of it, not all the ink will come up off of the paper. So let's, let's try adding a little bit of this lake in here. Who knows what it'll come out like. It might be beautiful, it might be ugly. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit more grass. We don't have enough of a color green that I like. So, we add a little more white in here. Okay. Let's see what's going to happen with this. Last thing I want to do is I'm going to take my very fine, finest one that I have and just so that we have some depth, we're going to add some white on top of here where our grass was. Make it look unclunky by adding some nice white ones. Bring it up to the front. Okay, before this gets too dry, we have to go to our next step. You know what? First I'm going to add a little bit of white caps in my, my water back here. It has a little more depth. Art is always a mystery. Just get ready for the surprise. So we're done with that. I'm going to put this aside. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the original print. So we're going to take our white sheet of paper. This is the part where you never know if it's going to be beautiful, if you're going to love it, or if you're going to hate it. And I'll place this on top of that plastic sheet of paper. So remember, we've got three pieces of paper down here. We have our original artwork that we're copying from or that we're drawing on top of and actually my actual painting that I put on the a sheet of plastic doesn't look anything like the thing that's behind it so that's how it becomes your original artwork because you've added and changed it so we've got our original picture down we've got our 
piece of plastic on top of that and now we're going to put a clean white sheet of paper on top and we're going to make our print. Sometimes this is called a mono print, and what I'm doing now is just taking a spoon that I flattened out. I'm just rubbing over it. You don't want to rub it too hard because sometimes it makes it look mushed out. But gently rub over so that some of the paint will pick up. Now let's hold our breath and see what we got here. too bad. This is what we came up off of that print. And as you can see, I'll stop for a minute and I'll show you this is your original piece of artwork because this is what I started with. This became my plate of what you printed off. Slide this out of the way here. And this was my original stimulation, or the original thing that I copied from. So now let me just take a minute and show you what happens. Sometimes people don't feel so good about their artwork, but once you start to frame it, that's when artwork really becomes finished. So, what I, we're gonna do next then is I'm gonna take a frame that I purchased at the store and this is very important for activity directors because what we want to make sure is if people are going to do artwork, they feel happy about the experience that they went through to do it and that they feel satisfied with what they did. So we want them now to turn it into a finished product. The way we do that is decide where we're going to frame this. Let's go right about here. I would then next trim this, the paper off of the sides, tape this to the front, and they'll have a finished piece of artwork. Now, since that was mine, I'd like to show you just a few pieces that other people have done to give you the confidence that you can go ahead and enjoy artwork, whether you have one hand or limited abilities with your hand. Here is using the same method. Here's a finished piece. And this is what they printed from, which doesn't look nearly as neat as their finished piece. Here's another one where a person did sunflowers. Here's one where a person did tulips. This person was a little bit more bolder, and his name was Jimmy Ruskowski, fine gentleman. And we would do this out in the garden. And he would throw paint all over the place. And that's fine because, you know, it hoses away. It's, it's water soluble. It hoses away. He did this piece. And then later on, when he was going through a magazine and we were talking about birds, he cut this out of the magazine when we were having this discussion about birds and different types of birds. And what he elected to do after he cut it out was to slide it into his original picture. He did a whole series of flower paintings, but then he went through his National Geographics and cut out bird pictures, and he added them to them. 
this not only became like artwork, but it also became for Jim uh, a way to study different animals and just incorporate them. We had him do an entire art show. As activity directors, the other thing that I want to you to encourage you to do is make sure that you show this off. Go ahead, go buy some black frames, frame up the six best ones, have your maintenance man allow you to use a hallway, have your administrator allow you to use one hallway and make a plaque and that becomes the resident art gallery. You will be amazed how people will say, oh, did my father do that? I didn't know so-and-so was such a good artist. The other thing that will happen is self-expression is very important in our activity programs. It's the one way that we identify ourselves from others and create our uniqueness. It inc increases our self-esteem. So having some avenue, some way of doing self-expression is very important, whether they're writing poetry or whether they're doing artwork. There have been a few times when the actual print came out looking better, the actual plate that we printed on looked better than the print itself. So in those cases, we took those plates and we backed them up with paper. And this became a lovely painting too. I don't, this is the type of painting where you only have one chance to do it. It'll never come out the same because it's so free in expression. It had so much movement when they were using their arms. And you know, you don't draw with your fingers, you draw with your entire arm. And that's why I want you not to be afraid to do artwork. Here's another one, again, where the original plastic painting was better than the actual print. When you go on creative journeys, you never know where you're gonna end up. But you should always take the creative journey.